Many of us may have seen and tried spring water. But where does the water come from? A spring is a natural exit point at which groundwater emerges from an aquifer or underground water-bearing rock and flows onto the Earth's surface, found in mountains, hills, and plains. Springs can be seasonal or perennial. Springs are the most important source of fresh water for both rural and urban communities. They are the foundation of thriving villages across the Hindu Kush Himalaya, where nearly 100 million people depend on an estimated 9 million springs for drinking purpose, livestock rearing, and household use. Springs also provide water for irrigation, fisheries, energy, and cultural and aesthetic services. This refers to the visual value that springs, including waterfalls, can bring to human well-being through their beauty. They are an integral part of groundwater systems. Springs enrich biodiversity and sustain the base flow of rivers, that is the flow of water that seeps into streams through delayed subsurface pathways. The base flow helps to keep water flowing in streams and rivers between precipitation events and even during extended periods of severe drought. However, springs are depleting at an alarming rate in the Indian Himalayan region. Nearly 50% of the springs have either dried up or are in the process of drying. This has led to a water shortage for both people and ecosystems. Springs are mainly drying up due to climate change and variability in rainfall and snow patterns. Other causes include land degradation and haphazard development. Overextraction of groundwater is also drying springs. However, this is not the end. Springs can be revived. This is done through a process based on hydrogeology. The area of geology that deals with the distribution and movement of groundwater in rock and soil formations. The first step in this process is to identify the recharge areas. The areas through which water infiltrates and reaches the aquifers where groundwater is stored and flows to a spring. In order to revive the springs, certain activities can be carried out in the recharge areas. Experts in hydrogeology, soil water conservation, forestry, and others can train communities how to do them effectively. These activities include digging trenches and constructing recharge ponds and pits to collect the surface runoff or water flow. This increases infiltration to recharge groundwater and aids in natural spring recharge. Planting vegetation and constructing terraces from organic material, known as terrace bunding, promote water retention and help prevent erosion. Agronomic measures include contour hedgerows, planted along the contour of sloping lands and intercropped with nitrogen-fixing plants to prevent soil erosion. Mulching, covering the soil with other organic material to preserve moisture and improve soil quality. And constructing check dams, small dams made to reduce water flow to counteract erosion used to channelize the runoff and to stabilize gullies. Typically, these activities are carried out by local communities with technical and funding support from government departments, NGOs, or the private sector. In cases where the recharge areas are located within state forest, the forest department takes the lead in implementing measures involving local communities. The people who use the springs are responsible for the maintenance of measures. It is important to incorporate traditional knowledge while implementing the spring revival measures. Examples include traditional ponds which are used by buffaloes as wallows which contribute to recharging groundwater and sacred forests which are maintained around springs for conservation purposes. In order to revive springs, it is crucial that efforts look beyond the spring itself. That is why we advocate springshed management as a nature-based solution, which involves not just management of sources, but also the recharge area benefiting people and nature. This solution focuses on resource sustainability and community stewardship, leveraging nature's potential to address water insecurity and even anticipating contestations around future water needs. Springsheds should be well-managed, the different groups of people who use the water 
also known as water user groups, should have clear rules and regulations for managing the springs and recharge areas. Women possess a plethora of knowledge about springs and their importance. It is crucial that women are included in the whole process, from decision-making to spring-shed interventions, and that spring-shed management planning is responsive to gender equality and social inclusion. Collaboration between communities is essential as recharge areas may span across several villages or the communities using a spring may not have user rights for a certain spring's recharge area. There can be payment for ecosystem services. Their participation for spring revival can be incentivized. Communities using the spring can provide incentives to the communities managing the recharge areas. Incentives can be either in cash or material or even labor inputs for maintenance of recharge areas. The success of spring revival interventions can be shown through increased spring flow, improved water quality, more water for households for drinking and other purposes, or a reduction in the time for fetching water. The time saved can be utilized for education, income generation activities, and self-care. Households don't have to purchase expensive water to fulfill their drinking and cultural needs. Due to spring flows, the flora and fauna of the local environment also thrives. Increased spring flows will result in more water in the streams and rivers, especially during the dry seasons. Effective spring shed management helps to improve the resilience of communities to climate change impacts and helps achieve multiple sustainable development goals. By reviving springs, local communities have increased water security even in the erratic climate and therefore they are less vulnerable to climate and other changes. We call on a number of groups to take action to revive our springs and help manage our water sources effectively. We recommend the policy community to create enabling policies and programs, practitioners to support communities in planning and implementation of activities and help in documenting success stories, failures and lessons learned. Academia, to help in designing digital and local solutions, generate evidence, carry out training and capacity building. Civil society, to mobilize and support communities. Donors, to fund more spring shed management programs. Community members, to take care of their water sources and use water responsibly. Local governments, to integrate spring shed management into their adaptation plans. Let's work together to bring springs back to life.